Hi, right, this is Rick. Welcome back. A few weeks ago, I did a comparison with Meta GPT-4 and Gemini's uh, Armor 3 scripting and coding ability. If you haven't heard of Armor 3, it's a very popular military simulator and game made by Bohemia Interactive. So today I'd like to see how Anthropic's latest release, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, compares with them. Spoiler alert, this is going to literally blow you away. Not because it's a jet blast script, and that's the intention of the script, but watch and be amazed. Internally, Anthropic did some agent comparisons between multiple different competing models. And if you look at the relative ratings according to their internal analysis, Claude compares favorably against the other generative models. I'm going to give it exactly the same task as we did before, and let's see how it does. So I'm going to paste in a request, which I've already written out. Write a script for Armour 3 that will create a jet blast effect from a plane's engine while taxing. And if a unit walks too close to the engine, the force of the engine should push the unit off the ground. Use a trigger attached to the plane to detect nearby units. This script should be generic and should work on all suitable planes. So let's see what happens. Okay, like really fast response. So let's have a look at the, the script that it's output. And this is a tricky, a tricky problem. I mean, Armour 3 is, unless you are fully aware of Armour 3's scripting language, it's a bit like C. Uh, Armour 3 is a, a, a large sandbox military simulation. It's used by a lot of military uh, in the, around the world for training. It's also used by the, the broader gaming community. And you can build your own missions with it. It has its own scripting language that, f that is filtered through a scripting engine that talks to the game engine. You can generate just about anything that you can imagine. So it creates a, an inline function called jet blast effect and it passes two parameters, the plane and the unit into the function. So gets the engine position using model to world. So that, that is a relative offset from the back of the plane because it says minus six. This is X, Y, and Z coordinates. So X being left and right, Y being forward and back and uh, Z being up or down. So, so there's the, the engine position is created, then it gets the direction and it gets a vector for the engine position and gets the ASL position of the unit uh, that's above sea level. So it gets the distance from the unit to the engine position, the offset. It then gets a force magnitude using linear conversion, using the distance. It then gets a vector, it does a direction vector multiplier using the force magnitude and then adds the force to, to the unit. So that's the little function that does the actual effect. Then it attaches a trigger using an attach uh, jet blast trigger function, it passes the plane into the function and it creates a trigger, which is an empty detector. It attaches the trigger to the plane probably needs to be adjusted slightly, but that's pretty close to where it should be. It then sets the trigger area. In this case, the width is probably too wide. That's X, Y, and Z. The trigger area is five meter radius from the center position of the offset. The trigger activation will be any present. And the trigger statements are, uh, this select zero will be the first element in the array of the trigger, the trigger detection. So trigger any objects that satisfy the trigger activation requirements, it'll take the first element in that array and checks to see whether it's a, a human being or a, rather as opposed to a human being, it is a man. In game terminology, it uses CA man base as the base class for, for units gets the speed of the plane and then it passes the plane and the unit into the jet blast function which we saw just now sets the variable plane to plane so it can be referenced and this is an initialization of the jet blast effect for each vehicle so this this function will add the trigger to all vehicles that match this kind of plane it will then attach, run the function and attach a trigger to each element in the array. X is a magic variable. Okay, so it then calls the jet blast effect. 
So it says it defines a function and applies the blast effect to a unit when it is near the plane's engine, creates a function called attach trigger and attaches the trigger to the plane to detect the nearby units, and then implements the function in a jet blast effect. This initializes the jet blast effect on all suitable planes in the mission. Okay, we'll ignore how you uh, would, how you could potentially start this up. The script will work on all planes in the mission. It creates a trigger area behind each plane's engine and applies a force to any infantry unit that enters the area while the plane is moving. You may need to adjust some values like the trigger area size, force magnitude, engine position uh, to fine tune the effect for different uh, plane models. Would you like me to explain any part of the script in more detail? No, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to ask it to add an animation. One of the things that's really difficult is that Armour 3 doesn't have a specific animation that's suited really to this particular requirement. Uh, it's quite an interesting animation. I mean, you really want the unit to kind of fly off his feet and look like he's being blasted sideways. And then he needs to go up into the air and then land on his, presumably on his face, and then get up again. So let's ask it to do that and see what it can come up with. So I've already written out this additional prompt. So I said, can you add an animation to the unit when he gets too close to the jet blast? The animation should be visible to all players in a multiplayer environment. That's, that's a test to see whether or not Claude 3.5 Sonnet understands uh, remote execution of animations. One of the more tricky things in Armour 3 scripting is to handle a multiplayer environment. For example, uh, an animation that's played on a player's machine uh, may not necessarily be visible on all the other machines on the network if they're all connected together in a multiplayer game. And in order to ensure that the animation, is, especially if it's played on a remote object such as an AI, in most cases they will be uh, local to the server and not to the client, you need to make sure that, that all the clients are synchronized in terms of that animation. So I've given it this, this task. I'm not gonna tell it really how to do the thing. So let's see what it does. So in that time, which is absolutely amazing, in that time, it's just unbelievable. In that time, it's updated the original script, found the necessary animations it needs, it's put the animations into the code, and it's made sure that it's multiplayer comp compliant. That's pretty impressive. So let's have a look what it did. Um, it, oh yes, over here, it remote execs, it passes the unit to a function called jet blast animation which is it's now included so there's the jet blast animation that it's written a new inline function it passes the unit into the function so it writes it gets a variable and sets the variable to false if it's not true if it hasn't been uh, set in other words the variable is null okay so it now sets the variable to true and it plays an animation using remote ex execution, which is exactly what it should do. And it's used an animation called Act Miller Knockout. Now this is a, a set piece animation built into Armour 3. So this animation will be played on, as soon as the jet blast hits the unit, the unit will play this animation on all machines. It resets the animation by passing the um, unit into this uh, remote execution timeout. It uses switch move, and that means reset the unit's animation back to default. Based on a number of recent tests I've done uh, getting scripts written by the main LLMs, I'd say GPT-4 and Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet are definitely the most powerful or useful tools right now for writing SQF scripts that require the least amount of editing. So who knows, uh, things are changing so rapidly within a, a few months time, uh, maybe I won't be running scripts anymore. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.